In this video, we're going to show you how you can use the auto inlay toolpath feature. And this allows you to compensate for the tool radius when cutting parts out that you want to insert into another piece. So let's just go to file, close. So we're just going to open a file that I've created earlier. I'm going to switch over to the toolpaths tab and then go into our 3D view. So we're going to demonstrate how using a standard profile and pocket toolpath will not work if you're wanting parts to fit inside other parts. So you can see here we have two identical letter E's and one I've assigned as a profile toolpath and then the other I've assigned as a pocket toolpath. So if we go into our preview toolpaths form, I'm going to select the profile, so the male portion, and I'm just going to preview that toolpath. And then we're going to select the pocket, which is the female portion. And we're also going to preview this toolpath. And so let's just take a look at what we have here. So hopefully you've probably spotted that this actually isn't going to work. This E is not going to fit into the pocket of that E. And the reason for that is when we create our profile toolpath, it respects all of the external corners that we have on a shape. And then where we have internal corners, we have radius cut corners that you can see here and here and here. And then all of the outer corners are all sharp right angles that we've got here. Now, when we look at the pocket toolpath, so looking at this, so obviously we're cutting inside of those vectors. So all of the external corners have radius corners and then the internal corners have sharp corners. And so this corner here is not going to fit into this corner here. Likewise, the, all of these external corners are not going to fit into these round corners. And that's just the nature of cutting corners with round tools. So this just really shows the problem that we're trying to overcome when using the auto inlay toolpath. When we use the auto inlay tool, the software knows that we want to make one shape slot into another where it rounds off all of the corners based on the tool geometry that we're using. So let's just reset our preview. We're actually going to delete these toolpaths. We're just going to go to delete I'm just going to delete all then we'll close out here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate this using the auto inlay toolpath. So with that vector selected, let's go over to the inlay toolpath, which can be found under the toolpath operations. I'm going to click on that. That's going to open up your inlay toolpath form. And we're going to start off by looking at the male inlay, the straight version and the female inlay, the pocket version. So let's go into straight. Now here you'll see it looks very much like the profile toolpath and that's because it's practically doing a very similar operation except it's going to take into consideration the fact that we may have corners in the geometry that need rounding off. And so here we can specify our start depth, which we'll put at zero, our cut depth, we'll just cut all the way through. And if you've forgotten what your material thickness was, you can always press C equals and that will input that there for you. Then we need to specify a tool from our tool database. So we're going to use the select option here and we're going to select the quarter inch end mill. We'll go ahead and press select. And then we can work our way down the form, give that a name. We'll just call this one male inlay and then we'll go ahead and press calculate. And then what we can do is we could go ahead and preview that toolpath and we can see what that looks like. And you can see straight away now that we've got rounded corners everywhere, which is really good. Right then, so we'll close out here. So next up, we're going to take this E, I'm going to go back into the inlay toolpath. This time we're going to look at the female inlay, the pocket version. So here we're going to specify a start depth, which we'll put at a zero. So most of the time you're going to have that set to zero unless you've already pocketed down into your material, in which case you just need to enter the depth at which you've already cut away. But in most cases, you're going to do that from the material surface. So we'll set that to zero and then you want to specify a cut depth. So for example, we're going to put a quarter of an inch in here. Then we need to select our tool. So we use the select option here to open up our tool database. And we must make sure that we're using the exact same tool that we used to create the male portion. 
And the reason for that is we need to make sure that the radius matches up to both parts. So here we're just going to select the exact same tool and then we'll go ahead and press select and we can see that's added that there. And it's worth noting if you are not using the same tool then this will not work. So then what we can do is we can specify if we wanted to do that as an offset or raster. In this case, we'll just go with an offset strategy. We can give that a name, pocket inlay, and then we could go ahead and press calculate. And then we can preview that like so. And again, we could give that a color. Let's go with that gray. And again, you can see all the corners here are all rounded, which is perfect because that means that this male portion is going to easily slot in to the female portion. And so that's all been done automatically thanks to the auto inlay toolpath and its ability to compensate the radius of the tool to round off all of those corners. Now we must take into consideration the practicality of cutting inlays and that's the fit of the male being inserted into the female pocket. Now the reality is that we do need there to have a very small difference in size in order for one to fit comfortably into another. Because if we cut them both out to the exact size that we have here, then we're going to find it very difficult to slot the parts together. And so the way that we can overcome this is to apply an allowance to the toolpath where we slightly undersize the male part or we slightly overcut the female part. And that will give us a little difference between the two to allow one to fit comfortably into another. Now, the allowance can be applied to the male, the female, or both, but typically the best method would be to cut the male first. And then what you can do is you can use that then to test fit into the female pocket, which you can then overcut the pocket until you get the required fit. So let's just go back into the pocket in there and we're going to look at an adjustment to this toolpath where we're going to oversize it ever so slightly. And so to do that, we just come over here and you can see we've got the option here to apply an overcut distance. So we're going to go with an overcut distance of 0 0.02. Now this value will vary depending on your material, the accuracy of your machine, the size of the tool, and the finish that you may be applying afterwards. And so we're going to oversize this by 0 0.02, but for you, you're really going to need to do your own test cuts to ensure that you get the sweet spot allowance to get that nice snug fit. So we're going to go with that and then we're going to go ahead now and then press calculate. And then what we can do is we can preview this like so. So you can see there was a slight overcut there. If you blinked, you might have missed it. We'll just jump into the 2D view and I'll just show you the actual uh, toolpath drawing. So we're going to toggle that on. We're just going to switch on the visibility of our toolpath and we're going to switch that to a solid view. And if we zoom in there, you can see it's overcutting past the actual vector itself. So we know it's done that overcut there. Right then, so next up, let's just go back over into our 3D view to take a look at that. We'll just undraw that. And at this stage, you could then go ahead and save out your toolpaths. And we recommend that you cut your male portion first. And then once you've cut that, you can then cut your female part and then use the male part to test onto your female part whilst it's on the machine bed. And if you need to make any adjustments with that, then you can just simply apply more overcuts until you're happy with the fit. Now, in the example that we've looked at here, we've cut both the male and the female parts out in the same sheet. And this really is quite unusual as you would normally apply this technique to two separate sheets using two pieces of material, where you just need to make sure that you're using the same tool for both the male and the female parts. So we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to save this file. So we're just gonna save this one as auto inlay. And then we'll go ahead and press save. And then we're just going to close out here. And then we're going to open an existing file. So we're going to go into our folder here and we're going to open the stepped inlay example. So here we can see straight away, we've got a file that consists of two sheets. 
we've got one sheet here called acrylic and one sheet here called aluminium and we have two identical letters just like we used earlier so let's just go to our sheets tab so we can see the acrylic sheet six by six by half an inch and then we've got an aluminium sheet that is an eighth of an inch and so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a different example of an inlay so let's just switch over to our toolpaths tab and we're going to go into the inlay toolpath so just going to click on that so now let's take a look at the other two inlay options that we've got here. So rather than cut a pocket for the female, we could look at cutting a hole. And then we could apply a step to the male, which is then pushed through from the back and locates against the stepped shelf, which is then glued together. And so you'd want to use this option if you wanted to create push through letters, for example, a sign with aluminium facing and acrylic push through letters that could then be backlit. So we're going to start by creating a stepped male inlay for the acrylic portion. So we're going to click on this vector over here and then we're going to use the stepped option in here. So first up, we're going to specify our cut depth. So we're cutting ultimately all the way through our material. So I've put Z equals in there, so it's picked up that half an inch. We're going to select a tool, so we're going to select the quarter inch end mill. And then we need to specify what our step looks like. So we've got the step depth, which is this portion here. So in here, we're actually going to put 0.375, and then that will leave a backing then of an eighth of an inch. Then we need to specify the step width, so that's the width from the uh, cutout to the actual, from where we've created the step to the edge of our cutout. So in here, we're just going to go with a 0.2 in there. And then what we can do is we could go ahead and press calculate, and then we've brought up the toolpath preview. Now, as we are working with acrylic, let's make our preview look a little bit more like acrylic. So we're just going to alter the appearance here. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. We're going to look at this pale blue plastic there. And then what we can do is we could go ahead and preview that toolpath. We can see what that looks like. We can delete that waste material and then twiddle that around and we can see better the effect of what that step does. Okay, so you can see here we've got all of our radius corners thanks to the inlay toolpath. And then we've got the width of 0.2 that surrounds the letter and then we've got this step that we've got here where we're left with an eighth of an inch thickness of material there so the idea is is we'd take this one and then we'd push it through the hole of the female portion so let's just switch that back to the top view and then we'll just close out here and then we're just going to switch to our aluminium sheet by using the drop down here and then we're going to take this vector over here and go back into the inlay toolpath form. We're going to use the hole option. So here we're going to cut all the way through. So Z equals like so. We're going to use the select option here and we must ensure that we're using the exact same tool as we did for the male portion. Okay, and so then what we can do is we could go ahead and just give that a name and then just press calculate. And then again, let's just change our material appearance so it looks something a little bit more metal. So we'll go with steel here. And then what we can do is we could go ahead and preview that. And then if we just delete the waste material there, you can see what we're left with. And there is our hole. And so if we just switch back over to the acrylic sheet and we'll just preview that toolpath. So this part is going to slot in to the hole that we just cut in that aluminium sheet. And so the key things to remember when using the inlay tool is to make sure that you're using the same tool for both the male and the female parts and applying an allowance to the female part to ensure that the two parts fit together without any difficulty. And that's how you use the auto inlay toolpath.